previously on UFC Prime Time. ACL injuries have crippled careers. You know, some guys have never come back, but if there's one guy who can come back in MMA, I believe it's a GSP. It's never good to get injured, but I truly believe it's going to make me come back better and stronger than, than I was before. This whole thing will help me uh, get, get the fire back. I have a lot on my plate um, between you know, my career and, and my family life, but you know, that, that, that's me, that's my life, is what I chose, and you know, I love every second of it. Carlos is the champion. He's the one who's got that belt around his waist, and uh, we all consider him to be the champion. Glory is fleeting, and uh, I think George wants to recapture some of his glory. I think he's coming in with a, with a point to prove. I want to fight the best, the, you know, the best GSP there's ever been. He says he's found new motivation. You know, he's got a fire lit under his ass, and I believe that. I'm excited by that. That fires me up. I'm the interim champion. I have to go in there. I have to take it to him. I have to win this fight. interim welterweight champion Carlos Condit, fighting, training, and conditioning are a way of life. And with the showdown with GSP just over a week away, he's begun to add intensity and variety to bolster his year-round regimen. I haven't taken a break since my last fight. I've been training straight through, varying intensities. Sometimes it's hardcore. Sometimes it's you know just really working on technique. He's been working a lot on his conditioning. He's put some more size, some more mass on him, a lot more jujitsu, wrestling quite a bit, and everybody's seen what what, what he can do kickboxing wise. Carlos' stand-up game, I mean, it's top notch. He's, he's fighting for the belt for a reason, you know. Uh, so I've trained with both of them, and uh, it's gonna be a hell of a fight. Sparring isn't the only workout on today's grueling schedule. Condit will spend the afternoon on specialized strength training with conditioning coach Adrian Gonzalez before rejoining Mike Winklejohn for another round of striking. Farther out from the fight we're working on, a lot of strength and power. Um, closer to the fight, we're really working on quickness and agility, um, endurance type stuff. We're really trying to peak for game time. Drive, 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 drive. Got it, good, right there. Having trained for so long for this fight, it afforded me the opportunity to, you know, really work on my strength. You know, really work on different aspects of my game that I needed improvement on, and uh, my physical strength, power, and athleticism was was a big part of that. On a typical day, you know, Carlos does his stand-up, he does his wrestling, he does his jiu-jitsu, he does his conditioning, and he studies film, so it's, it's, it's pretty in-depth, you know, how much time this guy puts into it. That's, that's why he's the champ. Started the morning off doing a little bit of shoot boxing, which is uh, kickboxing with uh, takedowns. I uh, did five rounds, did strength and conditioning this afternoon, you know, pushed it pretty hard, and then uh, hit pads. I feel tired. Uh, I feel like I need uh, a huge dinner and I need to go to bed and sleep it off and uh, recover a little bit. Twelve hours after it began, another exhausting day of training ends with a recovery session at the fighter's Albuquerque home. And as the fight draws near, he's begun to steel himself for the impending battle. Kind of getting into a different place in my head, you know, kind of going into a, a dark place. You know, aggression isn't necessarily a negative thing. 
possible to get in the hot tub, but the thing is you gotta end on the on the cold plunge. Focusing my aggression. That's that place that I'm going to right before I get in the cage to fight and uh, getting ready to you know, take out my opponent before he takes me out. As the countdown continues toward his long-awaited UFC return, George St. Pierre's training has entered its final stages. I can take the pitchfork from the devil Keep a super suit like I'm incredible From the deep blue sea to the dark blue sky morning, it's pro sparring at TriStar, and head trainer Faraz Zahabi will match GSP with some of the toughest training partners in all of the sport, but sometimes opponents outside the gym present an even greater challenge. Yeah, man, it's crazy. The guy wants to fight me. I, because I park my car and say, this is my place. Like I'm 80 years old, 75 years old. This is my place. I'm like, no, you weren't there, man. Get out of my place! Get out of here! And then as I walk to the gym, he's following me with the car. He goes to me, he's like, Don't look at me! <laughs> oh, then, then he go, I'll you up as I like, come on, man. <laughs> then I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, dude, it's like, please stop it, man, as I don't want any trouble. You, you cannot look good in a fight, even with it. <laughs> in a 75 year old guy, man. It's like, yeah. the, the, this is more scary than a young man, like, built. <laughs> what would you have done if he got out of the car and, and started chasing you? He's like, so I would have ran. I would have <laughs> ran, man. I ran. <laughs> All you see is Walter Wade champ, George. I, I would have ran. Hey, come back here. If you're in the first four, you're in the red mat and that little cage. Understood? If you're not in the top four, you're on the blue mats and in the rings. Today, over two dozen matchups occur at once, none more carefully overseen than St. Pierre's. It's an exhausting workout, but hardly the only facet of GSP's unparalleled training regimen. Chin down when you're throwing that stuff, chin down. Beautiful work, George, very nice. This camp marks an unprecedented workload, but seeking to recapture his title after a severe injury, St. Pierre has found a new fire. Ah! Nice work. The return process was very hard and made me realize life is short. And you need to, to make the most of it. You should live every day like there is no tomorrow, and uh, that's what I try to do right now. Away from TriStar, the work continues at Club IMCO Gymnastique, a nationally renowned facility where St. Pierre endures the same grueling strength training as some of Canada's top Olympic athletes. The rehab process was tough, but the surgery, the post-surgery, was the toughest, I think, for George. He was in a lot of pain. I remember him writing me emails. I remember him calling me and describing to me the pain. If you know George, he's the type of guy who's going to use that pain to motivate himself. Three, two, one, stop. Okay. Oh. There's always that X factor that he hasn't fought in a long time, but these are things you can't control. You just got to put them outside your mind. And he did a lot of thinking. He did a lot of planning for about his return, and uh, his plan is coming to fruition, and he's, uh, he's been following it to a T. But strength training isn't the only area where St. Pierre's comeback regimen has reached unprecedented intensity. Alongside members of Canada's national track and field squad, he has pushed through an exhausting series of conditioning drills that test the strength of his knee and the limits of his stamina. The day comes to an end with a dreaded dose of interval training. Four straight 400 meter runs, followed by a pair of 50 meter sprints. Paced by Canada's top track athletes, 
St. Pierre is granted just seconds of recovery time between starts and pushed to a point of total exhaustion. I think when George lost the title, he realized what he had. He really sees the value of you know, the life that he leads and he's doing what he loves and he realizes what it is to be a champion. It's something special, it's, something, it's a blessing, it's something unique and I think uh, he wants to capture that again. champion of the UFC, Carlos Condon, hanging out with us. What's up, guys? What's up, Rob? Hi! <laughs> hey, how are you? Uh, Doing awesome. How are you guys? Good. We're good, man. Yeah. See you, man. After winning the UFC interim welterweight title, Carlos Condon finds himself in the spotlight of the MMA world. Today, he visits a local radio station to promote next week's showdown with George St. Pierre. You and George are probably two of the nicest guys in, uh, in the UFC, so I don't see a lot of trash talking going on between you two. You know, there's a lot of mutual respect, uh, but, you know, we're both, uh, we're both warriors, man. We're going to come in there and, and, you know, attempt to, uh, you know, take each other's heads off. You know? you know, I'm, you know, not the legitimate champion, ultimately. You know, until he's beaten by somebody, he's the champion. I'm the contender. I need to, you know, continue my upward trajectory in the sport, and, uh, you know, George is the, is the next guy in my way. I'm excited to see you fight this guy, man. This is going to be good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. It fires me up to be able to get in there and you know and fight one of the best best mixed martial artists that's ever been. Bye. Nice Bye. Very nice meeting you guys. Today's workout is led by a special guest, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu specialist Caio Terra, a four-time world champion. Carlos brought in Caio Terra for this camp. Uh, Caio is a magician, Jiu-Jitsu-wise. The man is uh, on top of the game, you know, and Carlos is picking these things up fast, and Carlos believes, and that's, that's what's the most important thing. Is if you believe in what you're doing, that plays out in the cage because you have confidence to use it. You're standing too much sometimes. Working with Kyle has been amazing. Um, you know, I've, I've been successful using the jiu-jitsu that I learned, you know, 12 years ago. Um, and the, the, the sport has gone, come so far since then. Uh, so much evolution, so many new things to pick up. And uh, training with, with Kyle, I'm able to uh, implement some of that in, into my game. You know, your knee turns his head. Yes, keep turning him. Keep turning him. I don't know if I could be any more concerned than I already am fighting George St. Pierre. The guy is one of the smartest guys, I think, that's, uh, you know, that's ever fought in the sport. That's what makes him so dangerous. Hey. George and I are, are cordial with each other, but November 17th, when that t cage door closes, all niceties go out the window. We're going to get in there like savages and try to take each other out. My whole career, I've been the underdog, and it's a position that I love. You know, I have nothing to lose. I think all the pressure's on George, man. He's making this comeback fight. He's in, you know, he's in his hometown. I just get to go out there and have fun and do what I do, you know, exhibit the skills and the hard work that I've been putting in for the last year. Yeah. Carl's the fighter. He's improving every day. He's getting stronger. He's getting older. He's getting wiser. <laughs> this will be the fight that puts Carlos in that place where he's no longer the underdog, the guy that people think can't win the fight. He's going to prove everybody that he's the best fighter out there. Kyle, Adrian, Brandon, Mike, thank you so much for the work you're doing here. Fighters for recreating George and what he's doing, getting him ready. Let's toast to going up to Canada and bringing home the title back to Albuquerque. Yeah. I've made a career of, of beating the odds and you know, proving the doubters wrong. This fight is no exception. November 18th, I'm going to be on a plane with the undisputed UFC title headed back to Albuquerque.
When George St. Pierre suffered a torn ACL one year ago, the toll was not only physical, the injury separated him from his longtime TriStar team. After years of preparing each other for fights around the globe, the close-knit unit has become a family, both in and out of the gym. When we're training for a fight, we spend every day together. You know, we eat once, one meal a day at least together and uh, spend a lot of hours together. And, you know, if you have a good group around you, they're doing what's best to help you. Yeah, there's a responsibility of brotherhood and all the guys are, are pulling together to help them out. When you help someone to train, you feel like you're part of it. So when he's going to fight, you feel like you're going to fight with him. When he gets punched, I'm like, oh, I, it, it kind of, I, I feel it emotionally. So it, it's a weird feeling. I don't see myself really as a leader. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm popular because of, a, of the UFC, what I do. If I make my training partner better, I will have to get better to overcome the obstacle. The core of GSP's crew has remained constant during his championship reign but he's also invited special guest trainers to fine-tune his strategy for next week's title fight. Helping hone his ground game is fourth-degree black belt John Danaher. Let's line your body up, George. Take away the angles. John Danaher, he's like the Hannibal Lecter of jiu-jitsu. You know, he's a genius. He's an evil genius. It's a privilege to work with somebody who really understands the, the finest details and, and mechanics and the architecture of jiu-jitsu. Forehead pressure. Yeah. Forehead pressure, be severe, that's it. He comes here with a specific game plan. Um, he brings guys in who can mimic Carlos Condit's game, who are trained to do exactly what Carlos does on the ground. And he's gonna be looking to see how George reacts and uh, he's gonna be looking to, to make sure George's game is, is perfectly tailored to, to match up with Condit's game. Head over here, George, good. I think when most people first look at Jiu-Jitsu, they see it as a kind of a confusing chaos. It's important to understand there's nothing random about it. Things have to be thought out. You can go for a quarter Nelson here, quarter Nelson. And so it's kind of like a chess match where your own body is on the line. They're not just abstract chess pieces on a board that you have no feeling for. It's your body, which can be hurt quite badly if you make the wrong decision. While Danaher helms the ground strategy, Another guest has arrived to assist St. Pierre's stand-up attack. He's known simply as Lam, meaning the river, and he's among the top handful of Muay Thai fighters on the planet, capable of inflicting such harm that head coach Faraz Zahabi must issue a polite warning to the team. Uh, where's Lam? Lam is here today. If you're sparring with Lam, just spar technical, okay? Muay Thai. If you want to survive your day, you want to live to tell about it, be smart. Okay? Let him smack you around, but don't, don't rough him up. I'm serious, because he, he put you in the morgue, okay? Be very careful. No takedowns on Lam. Do not take Lam down at all. Do not touch his legs. Just spar with him very gently, okay? No push kick in the face. Too. No push kick in the face. Do not touch him with your feet, the soles of your feet. Do not touch his head. Do not grab onto his head. Do not wrestle him. Just shadow box with him, okay? Be very nice. Be very, very nice with him. They laugh. But one look at Lom's warm-up routine, and suddenly, it's not so funny. I would liken him to a Gretzky or a Jordan, especially if he comes to the West. The kickboxing here is nowhere near the level of it is in Thailand. We all know Condit's got very good Muay Thai and kickboxing. So we're really working with the best in the world to make sure that George's stand-up game is extremely tight and effective in his fight. Lam is a six-time Muay Thai world champion. He and his training partner, Yad, meaning the best, have traveled over 8,000 miles for their first ever visit to the Western Hemisphere. They train St. Pierre on no sleep, having just completed the grueling 24-hour journey. But now, just days away from his first fight in over a year and a half, there's no time for rest. The biggest challenges facing George are the biggest challenges that face everyone who ever made it in any combat sport. It's hard to get out of bed when you're sleeping in silk sheets with millions of dollars in your bank account. 
and go into a gym filled with angry people who want to punch you in the face. The challenge for a fighter is not so much the rise to the top, but the attempt to stay at the top. The world is full of people who fought hard to get to the top, but then fell quickly because they couldn't handle success. It's not the guy talking the loudest that you got to worry about. It's the quiet, humble guy who's not saying anything that is really the dangerous one. I guess we'll just have to see on uh, November 17th who's smarter, who can implement their game to destroy the opponent. I can have a replica, a clone of Carlos Condit, but I can have different training partner that does thing better than Carlos Condit. He's a gentleman, he's a good man, but November 17 is tricky business.